Hi! Good day everyone! I'm Lucy May Magpantay, fourth year medical clerk from Emilio Aguinaldo College School of Medicine. Welcome to our OB rotation. Today, I'm going to perform how to do physical examination on a pregnant woman. In every procedures to be done, we always start it by introducing ourselves to the patient. Next is we explain the procedure. Third is we secure the consent. Fourth is we gather the materials needed to save time and energy. And then last, we wash our hands. And for those procedures wherein we need to touch the patient, we could wear gloves. First is the fundic height measurement. We do this in order to assess if the fetus is growing properly and also to determine the gestational age. So in this procedure, we would like to know if the location and measurement of the fundus matches the current age of gestation. Our landmark is the symphysis pubis and the fundus. And our instrument will be no other than the tape measure. We will use the centimeter in measuring the fundic height. We will position the patient supine, so just be careful because it will compress the major vessel. We need to monitor the patient for any hypotension or a dizziness. So as we go along, it is important to know where is the fundus located during the course of pregnancy and after the delivery. So let's start with um, during pregnancy. So if it is 12 weeks age of gestation, the fundus is located above the symphysis pubis. And when it is around 20 weeks of gestation, it is already located on the belly button. So in between, from 12 weeks to 20 weeks, the fundus is located just between from the symphysis pubis to the belly button. When it reaches 20 to 36 weeks of uh, age of gestation, the AOG already coincide with the fundic um, measurement. So for example, if the age of gestation is 20, so the fundic height is around 20 cm. So if the age of gestation is 36, so the fundic height is also around 36 cm. So take note, at this stage, there could be a plus or minus 2 cm adjustment but that is normal so for example the age of gestation is around 24 weeks so we expect the fundic height is around 24 centimeter as well but if we take note that it's 22 cm or uh, more than 2 so that would be 26 cm that is still considered normal and expected when it reaches to 36 weeks it's already located at the cycoid process. That's why the pregnant mother will experience some difficulty of breathing. And now, when it moves to 37 to 40 weeks, the fundus will go down about 4 cm because the baby will lodge at the pelvic cavity. That's why it moves downward. Thus, there will be a decrease in the fundic height. Now, we go to after the delivery. Where does the fundic height located now? One hour after birth, the fundus will settle in the belly button. And then, after a day or 24 hours, it will uh, decrease into 1 cm. So, for example, it's already past uh, 48 hours. So, the fundus is already 2 cm below the belly button. So, as time goes by, when it is uh, 7 days already post-delivery, uh, uh, the fundus is um, in the symphysis pubis. And then, after 10 days, it could not be palpated already because it is in the pelvic cavity. And then, after 6 weeks, it will... Um, it will return to its pre-pregnancy state. So take for example, I have a patient here who is a G1 P0 and currently on her 20 weeks of um, age of gestation. So with the use of our tape measure, using the centimeter side, we will measure the fundic height. So our landmark is from the symphysis pubis. 
and then to the fundus. So since she is on her 20 weeks, her fundic height is also 20 centimeter. So it's around in the um, belly button. Next is Leopold's maneuver. It uses a systematic approach in order to determine the presentation, position, and engagement of fetus in utero. For special instruction, we instruct the patient to empty the bladder because as we palpate, this might be uncomfortable for the patient. And for the positioning, we position the patient supine. And again, we need to monitor the patient for any hypotension and dizziness as uh, this kind of position will compress the major blood vessels. As for the draping, so drape the patient properly, just expose the area or the part of the abdomen which is to be examined. So as we inspect the abdomen, inspect for the shape, any fetal movements, any surgical scars, and the presence of linea negra. And as we palpate the patient, make sure that our hands are warm enough so that the patient will not feel uncomfortable. First maneuver is the fundal grip. So we position ourselves facing the patient. So as we try to palpate the fundus, we are trying to assess the uh, size, shape, consistency, and mobility. Actually, we are able to palpate if it is the head of the fetus or it's the buttocks. So if it's the head, it's more of round and hard. If it's the buttocks, we are able to feel for the symmetry and it is soft. Next is the second maneuver, which is the umbilical grip. Still, we position ourselves facing the patient. Here, we try to determine the fetal back. So we palpate both sides of the uterus. So if it is the fetal back that we are able to palpate, it would be smooth and firm. While if it is the extremities, it will be somehow irregular. There will be protrusions and irregularities. Third maneuver is the pollux grip. We use our thumb and index finger to identify which part of the fetus is at the inlet and its mobility. So for the position, we still face the patient while doing this maneuver. So like this. Last maneuver is the pelvic grip. Now, we position ourselves facing the patient's feet. Here, we try to determine the fetal attitude and the degree of fetal extension in the pelvis. Now, we go to the inspection of genitalia. Actually, it is divided into two parts, the external and then the internal. For the external genitalia, we will just visualize what's on the outside surface. But for the internal genitalia, we need a special instrument which is the speculum, the vaginal speculum, in order to see what's inside. Since this procedure is sensitive because we are exposing the patient's external genitalia so please don't forget to secure consent for this procedure and of course provide privacy close the curtains as much as possible and then just expose the part which is to be examined usually in this case the patient prefers female doctor rather than a male doctor because they are um, typically shy to expose their private parts. Sorry because I don't have a good model for this procedure but I will just include pictures in this um, video. So for the inspection of external genitalia, it is important to know the anatomy because we will identify the parts of each. So 
what are the things that we need to inspect? Number one, skin lesions. Are there any pustules, warts, or scars? Second is subcutaneous or submucosal swelling. Third is pigmentation. Is it normal or is there any leukoplakia involved? Fourth is evidence of irritation. Is there any excoriation or ulceration? Fifth is infestations. Is there any presence of lice? Next is cosmetic alteration. Is there any tattoo? piercing, hair removal, or genital mutilation. And last, check for any presence of discharge. So assess the odor, the color, quantity, and consistency. So for example, our patient is on her third trimester. So as we inspect her external genitalia, we can see that uh, there is swelling in the vulva because of the the baby is dropping lower in the pelvis so there is swelling as well as we can see that um, the vulva is uh, darker because of the hormonal changes now we go to vaginal speculum exam it is done to visualize the cervix and the walls of the vagina sometimes sample is taken so that process is already called pap smear but in this procedure i'm just going to demonstrate how to insert the vaginal speculum so we position the patient dorsal lithotomy wherein there is a stirrup where the patient's leg could hang on and we ask the patient to move to the edge of the table so the buttocks must be at the edge of the examining table for the materials, of course, we need to prepare a pair of gloves and then our vaginal speculum and the lubricant. Some reminders and instructions. Again, since this is a sensitive procedure, don't forget to secure consent and provide privacy. Close the curtain as much as possible. And then warn the patient what to feel once the vaginal speculum will be inserted because um, for some vaginal speculum especially for the metal ones uh, the patient might feel cold because of that metal so just warn the, the patient so that she will not get um, uncomfortable upon insertion also make sure that you have a good light so that you'll be able to see once the cervix is already visualized Next is by manual examination. This is done to determine the size and nature of uterus as well as the presence or absence of adnexal masses. For the position, either with stirrup or the dorsal lithotomy or without the stirrup, the dorsal recumbent. For the materials, we need of course gloves and lubricant as well. First is we need to lubricate our fingers that we are about to use in this procedure. In this procedure, we will divide it into three. First, we will palpate the vagina and cervix. Second, the uterus. And last, the adnexa. First, we will palpate the outer portion which is the vagina and the cervix using our index and our middle finger. The thumb is abducted while the ring finger and the little finger is flexed like this. And then upon insertion, we will instruct the patient to dip briefly so that she will not um, get shocked or feel uncomfortable. And then we will insert it like this and then we will face our palm upwards 
So we need to peel and identify the cervix, its position, shape, consistency, regularity, mobility, and if there is any tenderness. Next is we're going more inner, which is the uterus. So our finger, our finger is already in the outer surface in the cervical OS. So we just need to push it forward and then the other hand should palpate midway the umbilicus and symphysis pubis. So for example, I will insert, I will push it forward. And then also press here. We need to fill the uterus and note for the size, position, consistency, mobility, and as well if there is presence of tenderness. Next is we need to palpate the adnexa. So this is our this is our vaginal finger, and then this is our abdominal hand that we use for pushing downward. So just Maintain that position and this time you just need to slide it toward the lateral side to check for the lateral fornix while still pushing inferiorly the abdominal hand. Coming down to our last procedure, which is the rectal vaginal examination. It is a gynecological examination that is used to supplement the pelvic exam. It is done to examine the rectal and vaginal areas for any abnormalities. In conjunction with the bimanual examination, rectal vaginal examination is usually done after that. So the patient will maintain on that position we will remove the gloves previously we have used in the vaginal exam. Now, we will wear a new pair of gloves. Don't forget to lubricate the glove fingers. Now, we will insert the index finger in the vagina while the middle finger in the rectum. Still, the thumb finger is abducted and the two other fingers are flexed. We ask the patient to bear it down as the rectal finger is being introduced. Next is to sweep from side to side and use the abdominal hand to bring the uterus and the agnexa towards vaginorectal hand. And then sweep from side to side. That would be all. Thank you so much and God bless!